All right, this is our second lesson for eighth grade, and we're going to be talking about some properties of operations with uh, our fundamental uh, arithmetic, which would be adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So let's get into this. Just some terminology here. Uh, if we're adding two things and we get an answer, we call that the sum. We subtract two things, we get a difference. If we multiply two things, we get a product. And if we divide something, we get a quotient. So real quickly here, uh, what is the quotient when the product of 3 and 6 is divided by the sum of 3 and 6? All right. So first thing we got to do, figure out the product of 3 and 6. Well, that's 3 times 6, which is 18. And we're going to divide that by the sum of 3 and 6. Well, sum is 3 plus 6, which is 9. So 18 divided by 9, we get 2. All right? All right, I'm not going to go through these two, but there is obviously a way that you can check your answers if you are doing a problem. If we subtract 435 and 268, we'll get an answer. In order to see if we got that right, we could add our answer plus 268, and we should get 435. And with division, if we do 525 divided by 25, we'll get an answer. If we take that answer and multiply it by this, 25, we should get 525. All right, uh, just a couple of notations that are important for multiplying and dividing. This is our regular three times five. A dot also means times. Parentheses, when numbers are next to each other in parentheses, that also means multiply. Um, old, the old division way, um, division by hand, and 6 over 2, those are all different ways to divide, or 6 divided by 2. Um, I like using this one, it's a little more, it's easier and it's more algebraic, so that's what I try to stick to. Alright, uh, this table, this can be found on page 14, and it's all the properties that we need to know. So it's a good tool, um, we're going to go over, we're going to go through these. First property here, we have uh, the commutative property. And the commutative property, well, we, we say that addition and multiplication are commutative. And the reason being, uh, if we look at addition, if we add two numbers, the order in which we add will not matter. For instance, 3 plus 5 equals 8, and 5 plus 3 equals 8. All we did was switch the 3 five and we still get eight. Okay? If we multiply two numbers, the order in which we multiply will also not matter. Example, three times five is fifteen, but so is five times three. So once again we switch the order. Doesn't matter, we still get to the same answer. Alright? So the big thing with commutative property is order. The order in which we add or multiply will not matter, and we'll still get the same answer. So, addition is commutative, multiplication is commutative, but are subtraction and division commutative? Well, let's check quick. 5 minus 3 equals 2. Does changing the order matter? Yes, it does, because 3 minus 5 does not equal 2. In fact, uh, 3 minus 5 equals negative 2. Subtraction is not commutative, nor is division. Because 6 divided by 2 equals 3, but 2 divided by 6 does not equal 3. That's actually 1 third. Division is not commutative, but addition and multiplication are commutative. In fact, a lot of the properties that we talk about today only apply to addition and multiplication. Our next property, identities. What would make this statement true? 3 plus blank equals 3. 
Well, 3 plus 0 equals 3. Uh, so whenever we add 0 to something, we get the same thing that we started with. That is why we would say 0 is the additive identity. So with multiplying, 3 times what gives you 3? Well, that's got to be 3 times 1. So we have a fun word for this one. We would say that 1 is the multiplicative identity, since when you multiply by 1, you get the same thing. So that's what identities are all about. Um, you either add to get to the same number, or you multiply to get to the same number. Next property, associative property, and this one oftentimes gets confused with commutative, so we're going to clear that up here. Uh, remember that when we see parentheses, we have to do what's ever inside there first. So 2 plus 3, we get 5, add 4, we get 9. Now all we did here is we took the parentheses from here and we just moved them over. That's all we did. They shifted. So, let's see if we get the same answer. 3 plus 4, 7. Plus 2, still get 9. Now notice that the numbers didn't change order at all. 2, 3, 4. The order did not change. The parentheses location changed. That's the associative property. This also works for multiplying. 2 times 3 gives us 6. Got to do the inside first. Times 4, we get 24. 3 times 4 gives us 12, times 2, we still get 24. And once again, order did not change, 2, 3, 4, but the location of those parentheses did change. Went from here to here. That is our associative property. Alright, our last property is the zero property of multiplication. That is basically just saying any time you multiply by zero, you're going to get zero again. That's an easy one to remember. For instance, three times zero will give you zero. All right. Uh, real quickly here, um, I'm just going to say these properties. Five times three equals three times five. Yes, that's true. And we switched the order in which we multiplied. So this is commutative. For B, uh, 3 plus 4 plus 5. All that's changing here is where the location of the parentheses are because the order did not change. 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5. That is our associative property since the parentheses switched and nothing else changed. Uh, here's one of our identities for C. Uh, 0 is the additive identity. So that's what we'd write here, additive identity. And here's our 0 property of multiplying. Uh, 6 times 0 will give us 0. So that's what D is. Uh, which property can we use to find each unknown number? 8 plus 0 will give us 8. That's our additive identity again. 1 times 9 will give us 9. Well, 1 is our multiplicative identity. So that's what B is going to be all about. Uh, because 1 times 9 brings you to 9. Um, that's our multiplicative identity. And C, once again, 10 times 0 will give us 0. That's our 0 property of multiplying. Uh, these types have tripped up some students. Uh, we're not looking for numbers here. I don't want calculations. I know the solution to this problem is given. Um, all we want to do is see what changed from this first step, or the given step, to the first step. And it looks like... 25 and 15 switch spots. That's order changing. That's commutative. Okay? Now we look from step 1 to step 2 and we see what changed. The order did not change. 4, 25, 15. But the location of these changed. They shifted over. This is associative. And from there, all they're doing here, 4 times 25 is 100. So here you could write multiply, and then from here to here they solve it. So you could just write solution right there.
real quickly here, I'm just going to go over the first two steps. Um, this one's a little tricky. It looks like our parentheses shifted, but they did not. Um, the parentheses still have the same thing inside them. So, what did change? The order did. 4, 4, 8, 8, 25, 25. So, the order change, remember, that's commutative. And from here to here, well, we did end up shifting these parentheses over to here. That would be associative. And it looks like from here to here, we just multiplied, took it right, multiply, and then we got our solution. You could write solution. tried the commutative property earlier, we did 5 minus 2 to get 3, and we found out that 2 minus 5 gave us negative 3. This is why subtraction is not commutative. But what I want us to notice is that 5 minus 2 is 3, and 2 minus 5, you still get a 3, but there's just a negative in front of it. So if we take something like 104 minus 329, we will know we'll get a negative answer because we have a smaller number minus a larger number, but we can do this. 329, 104, we can subtract them normally. We get 5, 2, 2, but we know we're going to get a negative number. So, negative 225. Alright, so same difference except for uh, you get a negative answer. So, that's a useful tool for us. All right, uh, find the value of x and y. Uh, we didn't go over this too much because we did a lot of this in seventh grade, but uh, solving for an unknown, we'd use inverses. 30 minus six will give us what x is. So this should be 24. Uh, 30 divided by six should give us this because this is six times y equals 30, and the inverse of multiplying is dividing. So we should get 6 times 5 equals 30. So y would be 5 right there. All right. I do not have the assignment on me right now, but it is out on the homework link if you're interested.